very uh, uh, hard work. I hope I will do it fine because I'm going to speak in English and then in Spanish and then again. So I excuse myself if I make some mistakes. But uh, well, now I'm going to introduce you, Paolo and Michele, to uh, our students and our attendants. Uh, so I'm going to be in Spanish. Uh, bueno, eh, hola a todas, a todos. Eh, les damos la bienvenida eh, a pues, esta a continuación, a este segundo día, nuestra segunda charla de la Cátedra en Torno de la Universidad Iberoamericana Puebla. Uh, en esta ocasión, pues estamos muy eh, felices de recibir a Paolo Naldini y a Michele Cerruti, quienes eh, pues nos acompañan eh, desde Biela, Italia. Eh, ellos son parte de Chita del Arte, Fundación Pistoleto y la Academia Unide. Uh, entonces, bueno, pues nos, nos da mucho gusto recibirles. Eh, en esta charla de 30 minutos nos van a compartir su tema asociado pues, a la labor que ellos realizan en la Fundación Pistoleto y en la Academia Unide, que, eh, bueno, pues ustedes verán a continuación que eh, realizan una ardua labor en cuanto a eh, investigar y promover eh, los trabajos creativos que tienen que ver con arquitectura, con diseño y con prácticas artísticas, siempre con una perspectiva social y crítica, de tal modo que para nosotras pues, es verdaderamente eh, súper importante escucharles. Encontramos muchas conexiones entre las perspectivas de eh, lo que ellos realizan y la labor que se realiza desde eh, nuestra universidad. Y entonces, bueno, pues nos, nos, da, nos da mucho gusto contar con ellos. Posteriormente a esa charla de 30 minutos, tendremos un espacio de 15 minutos pues para hacer sí, bueno, preguntas. Eh, y eh, bueno, pues al terminar ese, ese espacio, vamos a poder tener la oportunidad uh, de eh, compartir con ellos. Si ustedes tienen alguna duda, alguna pregunta, ya saben que la pueden dejar en la caja de mensajes. Eh, pueden hacerlas en español y nosotros, bueno, tanto Paolo como Miquele podrán le darles lectura. Si hay alguna cosa que no nos quede clara, pues ya la, la, la podremos traducir al español, pero bueno, al inglés, perdón, pero bueno, pues Paolo y Miquele entienden muy bien español, entonces nos va a dar mucho gusto uh, también eh, leer sus preguntas. Voy a compartir rápidamente la semblanza de nuestros invitados antes de darles la palabra. Uh, Paolo Naldini es artista y director eh, general de Chita del Arte, Fundación Epistoleto. Él es director ejecutivo con una gran ex, eh, experiencia y un amplio historial de trabajo en el sector de las artes, vistas como encima social para activar procesos de cambio sostenible, inclusivo y responsable. Él es un eh, sólido profesional que también eh, tiene una gran experiencia en vinculación desde la perspectiva empresarial con una licenciatura en Ciencias Empresariales y Económicas por la Universidad de Turín. Gracias, Paolo. Por su parte, eh, Miquel Echerruti, él es coordinador académico de la Academia UNIDE, es doctor en urbanismo por el Instituto Universitario de Arquitectura de Venecia, profesor en el Politécnico de Turín, donde se ocupa de las relaciones entre el territorio, la economía y la sociedad. En su investigación, realizada a través del encuentro de la planificación urbana con el Social Engaged Art, la sociología, la economía y los estudios culturales, surgen tres líneas principales. ¿Cómo las formas contemporáneas de fabricación son capaces de hacer ciudades? Los territorios mediáticos como plataforma de la modernidad occidental y la forma en que el proyecto puede redefinir un imaginario diferente para la construcción de un futuro sostenible. Um, bueno, pues, eh, gracias, Paolo, gracias, Michele, welcome, and thanks again for being here. It is an honor. We have 30 minutes for your conference, so uh, welcome. Thank you so much. Gracias muchísimo, Alma. Buenos días a, a todo. Gracias, Xavier, por uh, uh, la invitación. Thank you so much for the invitation. I, I, I would love, me gustaría muchísimo hablar español, ma es mejor que yo hablo uh, English. Uh, I'd better speak English. Uh, so, um, I, I, I would like to share some, uh, some stories about uh, my my venture uh, within the arts world and from the arts world into the world, well, back into the world, um, that I had the chance to do thanks to joining Pistoletto in uh, his quest uh, when he was already 
uh, 60, in his 60s, because I, I met him and I joined him in 2000, in year 2000. And, and Pistoletto was born in 1933, so he, he was already 67, uh, and now uh, he's still here, uh, joining, uh, joining, or, or on the contrary, directing as an artist uh, our endeavor in Città dell'Arte. So I will tell you some stories about this, uh, and uh, and I'll show you some pictures. I will share my my screen with you now, uh, and, and then I would uh, um, leave the floor to Michele for uh, his uh, presentation, and hopefully we'll have. Uh, time for a few uh, comments from you and perhaps uh, some uh, uh, more uh, some some more thoughts or questions. Uh, now you are uh, see you will see many many uh, images, uh, but uh, uh, I th this is something I would like to kind of uh, give you some hints, uh, and then if any of you will find more. Uh, interest uh, you can write to us and we can uh, keep in touch uh, uh, thanks to Alma uh, and making this bridge um, now you can see some numbers uh, and some Italian words that I hope you can understand uh, because they're pretty similar um, so you can see that there are about 42,000 people coming and going uh, within Città dell'Arte they they live they work they learn in Città dell'Arte. They're not like museum goers who just simply go to uh, to visit an exhibition. And, and also I'd like to show you these buildings. We are in the north of Italy. They used to be uh, factories. They are old, uh, like 150 to 100 years old. Sorry, and, Paolo. Sorry yes? to interrupt you, but we're yeah. looking at the first slide. I think we're not looking at the at the following one. Ah. Okay. How is it going now? We are now going the one with the numbers, now with the buildings. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So thank you for saying that. And if I do this, do you see anything changing or are you still stuck on one? We are we are now looking at uh, for nothing change. I think it's because you are not on presentation mode, but we are looking at the exactly. So the okay, I, I will I will present uh, it through this uh, uh, situation like this and this. So so yeah, uh, you can see. Can you see now changing the images? Yes. I, okay, so now you can see things happening within these buildings that used to be textile factories and now are, uh, I, I like to say, a factory of social fabric. Uh, but um, probably I need to tell you one an anecdote. Uh, you have to imagine Pistoletto uh, in, uh, in Vienna, in Austria, in 1992, and he was a teacher and there were many students in front of him, artists, they were studying sculpture uh, and visual art. And Pistoletto knew that uh, only uh, perhaps one or two of them could uh, in the future work uh, and make a living as an artist. And that was a problem for him. But also there was another problem. Because if he looked around himself, he, he would see the world in dire need, tremendously in need of uh, involvement, engagement, of innovation, of change. And so he had a lot of people in front of him wanting to bring about their talent to create something that did not exist as artists and creators. And he had the, uh, the, the uh, uh, awareness of the gigantic need for change, but he also knew, because he was an accomplished artist already, that the art system would allow for a very, very minimum uh, communication. 
So he came along with this with this challenge. I need to connect these two polarities. I need to connect the the uh, the, the desire and the talent for change and the need for change. But if I only go through the art system, there is not enough uh, space. The hole is too small. It's a bottleneck. So what will I do? I will have to go to connect with the world, if I can say so, uh, directly, without passing from the art world. So artists will begin, and they did begin, to work with Pistoletto in uh, architectural environment, in the kitchen and food, in fashion, and, and in, uh, in science. Uh, but they would enter there as artists. But the main, main thing was that they would not simply um, make murals on the walls of the of the of the air of the uh, rooms where people make decision. So if if I if I can uh, have an image, imagine a room. There are a lot of people inside, maybe sitting at a table, and they make a decision. And the art, where if 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 ever can you see art, you will see it on the, on the wall, hanging off the wall. What we want to do is to allow this art to come off the wall and sit at 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 on a chair at the table where decisions are made, and then influence the decision-making process. Uh, but that is a long and vast program, if, if, if I can say so. And in order to do that, one can begin from symbols. And you can see here, working on imaginary. Uh, you can see these three circles. Uh, this is a symbol that represents the connection between two elements that are on the side. You have one on the left and one on the right, but you have another one in the middle. So creating a space to connect two elements is probably the main or role for us as creators. We are starting from what exists. You have the positive and the negative. You, you have day and night. You have one here and one there, but you can, through your art, create something that brings them together, and then you will have something that before did not exist. The very symbol, it, you can see it here, this is an astronaut in, in, in a space station, and he, and he has taken the symbol as a symbol for his mission, for example. Huh? because he wants to connect life on Earth, uh, so nature and science. But in order to do that, he has to create a space. You, you cannot just allow uh, or keep things separate. So here you can see that also in, on the Louvre pyramid for a few months. Uh, and, and here it is on the United Nations premises in Geneva. It's a permanent... Uh, installation. So one can, as I say, act on a, a symbolic level uh, or you can begin to uh, work on uh, education. So this is what you do, <laughs> Alma, uh, and you have uh, people coming and sharing their experiences and making experiences. For example, here there is a group of people going to the mountains and working with uh, a local uh, community, and here they go and work with textile factories, and and they they, they look and find ways to connect and uh, and and create these spaces, spaces for something to be come alive that before did not exist. Sometimes it can become very 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 concrete and trivial. Uh, Sometimes it means to enter into the nitty gritties of business, for example, or how do you run a hospital, or uh, how you uh, plan for 
parking lots uh, in, an, in a neighborhood. Uh, and so you do have to sit at the tables where some experts are, uh, uh, sh are sharing their knowledge. And what can you bring there? You're not an expert in parking lots or in uh, therapies for uh, whatever disease. Um, so the first and main thing that you can bring about is the ability to create connection in order for them to connect, because most times they themselves, although they are sitting at the same table, they don't talk and understand one with another, but one to another. So the possibility for a co-creation is much, uh, much uh, lesser. Whereas if you enter and step in and create environment and conditions for uh, a joint or a, or a co-creation to occur, uh, you never know what you you they, they you all can come about with. So this is mostly the idea of um, entering into the art into the society, and uh, not only having performances like this that can impact on the symbol, but uh, also having programs like this, for example, where uh, the symbol has become. This, the logo for a uh, UNESCO designation of the town of Biella, this is where we are based in the north of Italy, as a creative city. This meant that thousands of people uh, began to reconsider their own identity regard, uh, if we, with respect to the city where they were born uh, with this uh, new uh, perspective of uh, being creative, of course, which is not that granted uh, uh, in, in all cases, and not only, totally, but being created con with the, this symbol as the logo, the symbol of connection. Now, let me go through quickly some other uh, inspirational, hopefully, visions. This is an artwork by Pistoletto, 1973 already dealing with the issue of uh, uh, consumerism, fashion, and leftovers, and, um, uh, and the opposition between that and the canon, the canon of beauty in the classical uh, era. And now here, what do you have? You have this Officina 39. This is a small dying uh, factory. They, they die with colors, fashion. And you know what? They managed, after working with us, to die from one kilo of rugs. For example, you take all the red rugs from this uh, installation and you take one kilo of red rugs, they can dye two kilos of uh, uh, raw fabric. So they can dye with circular economy and production in their process. And that is something that they came to starting sitting with this uh, <laughs> this artwork. Actually, they came to visit Città dell'Arte, they came to understand what this uh, artwork was about. Uh, they began to discuss with our experts in uh, um, fashion design and sustainable fashion. So there are many stories like these that I can I could tell you. Uh, uh, that uh, try to intersect with the uh, commercial world, uh, with the production world. You can see here a cup of Illy collection that says no water, no coffee uh, uh, 20 years ago. It, it was becoming a, a vehicle for a message that is not only about how great this coffee is, but how great it is that we have water. And if we fuck water, we fucked ourselves. So there are there are many things that happened in this in these uh, in these uh, twenty and so years, and we worked with so many different constituencies on food, architecture, amazing discoveries that scientists or ac activists do in their communities, uh, and, and we had the chance and the 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 honor to 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 work with them making performances but making also specific direct projects 
and learning to do fashion, for example, in a more sustainable way. And then, of course, you have uh, all these. But uh, before passing the word to Michele, am I right that I am? Uh, I still have a few minutes. You have one, uh, two minutes left. Sure. Two minutes. Okay, so <laughs> I run through this that I am very fond of. Uh, hopefully, in two minutes, uh, you can probably read. There is this uh, connection or this path passing from automata to authors. Uh, and that is, uh, uh, there are many, many things that in life we do out of automation. Now, here we have four major psychic dynamics. I will take fear. That is, <laughs> we are very familiar, all of us. And there is a very good reason because nature gives us fear because when you uh, are um, into when you experiment fear in an, in any very uh, fraction of a second your body becomes like a rocket you can run like crazy you can do uh, jumps uh, and, and 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 bear the pain and that is automated but if you allow autom automatisms or automization to take too much of your um, psyche, what happens is that you are not anymore uh, yourself because you are automated. You're like an automat. You're like a robot. And therefore, what do you have to cultivate to counterbalance these automated mechanisms that by nature we do have maybe uh, as simplistic as it can sound it is creation creation is what mostly allows us to experiment psychic circles neurotic circles that are free from automation and uh, research for example is it is one of them dialogue but well, i don't want to go too much into this because i don't want to run out of time. So basically what I wanted to share with you is this final uh, I don't, vision that art is not just evasion. Uh, where many people say, oh yeah, through art uh, you have good time, you can uh, run away from the reality of life and you move into your own private world. Well, that is not at all the truth. Because through art, you connect with your deepest root and, and deepest identity uh, and, and what really matters to you. Uh, and if you see, sometimes people in their lives, they have uh, some very bad uh, events or trauma, and they suddenly reconnect with what really matters. But art allows to do that. It actually is that connection direct to your root, spiritual root, biological, material, body, fleshy root. And, and, and that allows us to uh, reclaim agency, who we are, what do we do, and how we do it. So from automata to authors, and I, I, I think it, and I hope it has been pretty conf confusive <laughs> because it's a lot of information. And I hope perhaps through questions or other ways we can uh, deepen the whole thing. So thank you and uh, to you, Michele. Gracias, Paolo. Eh, yo también hablé en, en inglés porque el español es un poco difícil. Eh, Alma, ¿cuánto tiempo eh, falta? Uh, we have 10 minutes. Talk. Perfect. Ok. Um, first of all, uh, what I'm going to say, uh, I mean, you can find some references of what I'm going to say in uh, the links uh, I put in on the chat and also uh, on a paper that I've just been writing in the last months and will be published in this book. Um, so what we try to do is, uh, because of course we, we learned a lot of things from Paolo's speech and we tried to delve into uh, this world of a socially engaged art based in a 
uh, cultural foundation and contemporary art foundation. But what we may, be, may miss is how the cultural foundation may be able to connect with the territory where it is placed. We have connections with any places in the world, as you saw in Cuba or in South Africa or even in Singapore or uh, Australia. But what do what does an art foundation uh, working on the field of engaged art do in the territory where it grows up? Uh, w w which kind of relation such a f international foundation has with the local territory? We did so locally, we may many times say. So to uh, delve a little bit into it, I want to show you uh, four uh, images, very similar one to each other, um, if it works. Yes. So can you see it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I think we have lost uh, Michele, uh, uh, otherwise, uh, uh, can anybody hear him or see him? I think he has. No. Okay, bueno, vamos a esperar un, un par de minutos, a ver si um, logramos recuperarle. Um, pero bueno, eh, mientras tanto, eh, me gustaría eh, también recordarle a, a nuestra audiencia que eh, pueden eh, dejar sus preguntas en la caja de mensajes y eh, bueno, pues también eh, revisar, eh, a ver que ya hay quienes han reaccionado a la presentación, a la liga que nos ha enviado a Miquele. Y bueno, pues también eh, un poco eh, recordar también estas ideas que nos ha presentado Paolo, uh, que parecen eh, verdaderamente relevantes cuando reflexionamos acerca de nuestra práctica, eh, ya sea desde las eh, disciplinas del diseño, de la arquitectura, del arte, pero sobre todo eh, ir más allá de ese pensamiento disciplinar y romper con, con, con esas... Eh, pues ciertas barreras que eh, muchas veces, y creo que es una práctica que sobre todo le sucede al arte, ¿no? que parece que le hace ver eh, como separado de la vida, ¿no? eh, estas prácticas y, y esta perspectiva súper interesante que dice Paolo, que es verdad que es muy recurrente, a menudo se piensa al arte como una desviación, una separación, un espacio para el divertimento, cuando eh, quizás el sentido político actual de las prácticas creativas tenga que ver justo con intervenir. Eh, ah, aquí está eh, Miquele de vuelta. Eh, Andrés, no sé si lo puedes ver. Eh, Miquele, can you uh, uh, use the icon uh, of reaction of uh, hand up so uh, Andrés can see you and make you now uh, presenter. He asked if he can be made uh, um, a speaker again. Yeah, sure. Thank you. It's I, I can see him here, uh, but Andres, no sé si puedes eh, verlo tú. No, no lo veo. Si pudiera levantar su mano. Michele, can you use the button uh, of reactions to raise your hand so uh, Andres can identify you among the audience? Andrés, es que él, sí, va a ser difícil verlo, pero él aparece como invitado. Aquí en la caja de mensajes, no sé si lo ves, puso un mensaje justo al final. Estoy buscándolo, en un segundo. Ok, He, ahí está Andrés, no sé si ya lo ves, yo veo aquí que la mano alzada. Sí, un segundito. 
Yeah. You are now, Caleb. Yes, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened, but just everything blocked. So we, I will try not to share anything because sometimes when you're sharing, then it uses much more energy, but it doesn't matter uh, because you have uh, the links uh, that I've put, which are referring to four, at least four different projects of uh, the way we try to engage our work and our uh, daily activities with the locale. So the first one is, uh, as you can see, it is called Let It Be. So let's please, let's please eat local. B-E, it's like for Biella, no? So, uh, thank you, Paolo. Um, so in this case, uh, this logo and this project is, is trying to transform and to adapt the idea of the third paradise. You see, this still is the same symbol and the, the region around is the region of Biella, is the district. So it's the third paradise in the land of Biella. So what, do they, what does this project do? at least two main issues, two main projects. The first one is trying to work with the local agriculture production. You know that agriculture is one of the most polluting industry in the world uh, because of many, many reasons. And at the same moment, at the same time, together with the pollution issue, we also have the issue of health and of uh, the possibility of uh, eating differently and to live differently and to have a different relation with the territory. So in a way, part of the project is dedicated to local agricultures and farmers. And so uh, by uh, engaging them into a network, um, we try to support and produce a diverse and, and a different way of, uh, of cultivating, not extensive, but uh, and not intensive, but high quality with has a different relation also without chemicals, without any other projects, any other products. So from one side, we have this support to the local producers and with a market like a weekly market. It's a very, very simple thing, but a weekly market for the locals, the local farmers means for them the possibility of transforming their activities to integrate their activities into uh, a larger community. And the other project connected with Let It Be is abandoned lands. Uh, which is a project uh, focusing on the abandonment of the land. This is the, the place we live is an industrial place, is an industrial territory. So many, many lands have has been have been abandoned through the decades because the people wanted to go to work in the factories more than in the land to to, to cultivate. So we have a bunch, incredible list of uh, uh, of of lands, of territories, of soils abandoned, but we also have many many people um, coming from different realities that would love to cultivate or to start a project in agriculture. So we basically make these two lists and we put the people together. So again, the role of art is not changing completely the system, is not solving the problems, but connecting instead the people to let the people solve the problems themselves through art. So in a way, art is an empty uh, system. So we don't give a solution, but we offer the possibility to connect. So the second project is that is about fashion. Let, um, it's called fashion best, no? like bioethical sustainable trends or other, let's say, anagrams of, uh, of the same uh, acronym. Uh, and this project of fashion is started in 2009. So basically the idea was, okay, how can we change um, our approach to, to, to the way we live, to the way we wear. Because in a way, as I said, agriculture is one of the most polluting industry in the world, but fashion is much more. Uh, we have the, the first most polluting industry is the one of oil, and the second one is the one of fashion. So if art wants to really change or to really uh, cope with the issues of, uh, of contemporaneity, of course we have to, to cope with the issues of fashion as well. So we started this project in 2009, and let's say we have at least three different areas. First of all, something which is very local, but not only local, uh, which is a platform, a network of firms, of entrepreneurs who decided to uh, stay together, to meet together in a production chain, because the main problem, the main issues for fashion today is the traceability. Who made my clothes? Who made the things I'm wearing? And the point is to be able to trace all the production chain before 
the moment when I wear it. So basically by engaging these firms and these uh, entrepreneurs into a big production chain, we can, for instance, give many advices to big, also very big brands for producing sustainable fashion and to cope with them. The second uh, main area of best is instead a big network, a big platform of fashion designers. So fashion designers, uh, yeah, you as a fashion designer, you can of course work on sustainability, but you need a lot of money for producing, for uh, gathering the materials, for making photo shoots, for making and for participating to festivals. So the idea is what if we put together again, what if we connect the diverse uh, fashion designers working on sustainability? And when I say diverse, I'm really saying uh, the difference, I really want to mention the difference between the way they work, the way they act, the way they are uh, in a way. Um, so the, the, also the idea that when you connect, when you use art to connect, you, you cannot really divide or split or choose. You don't want to choose. You want to choose in terms of principles, you want to choose in terms of goals, of aims, but apart from these, so if we are working towards the same goal, which for us is still the idea of the third paradise, so new integration between artifacts and nature, then in a way we can really open as much as possible this connection. And the third area of working is uh, the work we do with big institutions like Camera Moda Italia, Sistema Moda, or the UNIC, which is the Economic Committee of the United Nations in Europe, to promote protocols for changing the way we, uh, we produce uh, fashion. So just to go much faster to the last two projects. The first one is Biella Città Creativa. You saw already the symbol that Paolo showed before. Again, the symbol of the third paradise around which, since it's not an artwork, but it's a project, this allows us to apply it and to use the concept and use the project to apply to different realities and different issues and territories. So in this way, really the fort that the foundation did in the last uh, at least three, four years was not only to give a symbol to a project, but to put together people. So around the idea of Biella Città Creativa or Biella Creative City, we don't have uh, only like a symbol, but we have a table of stakeholders working on many, many different issues like uh, infrastructure, food, energy, and so on. And just to close this, uh, let's say, uh, couple of projects that, that I showed you, uh, also because I see that Alma came back, uh, the last project is the project I'm coordinating, which is Academia Unidei. So in a way, the foundation felt at a certain moment the necessity, the urgency to transform all those capabilities into a formal school. So we basically studied two main issues, so social engaged art and sustainable fashion design. And those two courses are really the core let's say, of our activities also as uh, education practi practitioners, uh, combining always together research and practice, since in a way what, what what's really is at the core of an art practice and also at the core of pistoletto practice is to put together the thought and the practice, what we do and what we think. And uh, the research we do is really done, done by practice and uh, the practice we do is really found on, on the research. So these two courses and some other courses, but let's say these two courses, sustainable fashion and social engaged art are really, uh, let's say, uh, like the last step of a big research, which is uh, enlarging, enlarging and trying to find any time the answer to the question how art can connect with any branches of human culture, which is really the core of the mission of the Pistoletto Foundation of the day of Città dell'Arte. Thank you very much, Michele. Gracias, Paolo. Gracias, Michele, eh, por, por este recorrido eh, tan, eh, tan rápido, pero también tan rico, que seguro, eh, bueno, pues eh, despierta muchas eh, dudas, muchas ganas de conversar, pero eh, sobre todo eh, ganas también de, de conocer más acerca del trabajo que, que, que realizan. I have one question uh, from Dariana. We have three minutes left, but uh, perhaps we can uh, like uh, give a brief answer to this, even though it's a very complex question. Uh, what has been the project that took the most deepest creative process, how it happened, which was the result? Excellent talk. 
I don't know if any of you want to talk. I think, well, Michele has talked about uh, two uh, three huge projects, but uh, perhaps if you want to uh, say uh, about something to this. Well, the, probably the one that has uh, taken the most deep creative process is uh, what we have named the art of demo praxis, because in a very Boesian, like boys, you know, in a very Boesian <laughs> uh, recurrence, uh, we are taking the whole society uh, as uh, our artwork. Uh, not only our, uh, as an artwork, a collective ongoing artwork. Uh, in order to do it pro uh, uh, concretely, uh, we have uh, devised with a lot of uh, uh, activists and social innovators some uh, uh, scenes, like in a theatrical opera, there are three scenes that uh, uh, take place, but you don't really know exactly who are the characters, what plot happens. You only have these major, you know, three L moments. And, and one is um, when you map at the terrain and you begin to talk and listen and go visit people and make interview. And so you, you, you make these connections, you know, but also you gain a lot of uh, you know, people tell you stories, they give you uh, uh, objects, uh, they share their their house with you and, and you see how they work. So th this uh, this first uh, big scene, like in a like an act, act one of an opera uh, is uh, is the mapping. And then you you have a second that is uh, Everybody together, like you know, like in an uh, agora, like in 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 a, in a square, people come together and then they begin to discuss, talk, uh, meet, uh, learn who one is and the other is, and they begin to connect. Oh, you do this, I do that. Well, I am here. So all this this is sort of a of a feast of a party, uh, but you need to also uh, have uh, a sort of director, like like in the theater, no. Uh, or in, in the in the orchestra, uh, in order that this this party uh, um, also allows for everybody to participate, to have fun, uh, and so forth. And then the third uh, grand uh, uh, scene, usually, uh, we, the, it has been uh, identified like like a big uh, cantera, huh? like like when you have a big shan. Uh, work inside like in the street i don't know there's a, this big work inside they are rebuilding the street or they are building a new a new building so there is this uh, working going along and you have hundreds of people doing their work or and then they have lunch uh, the day together and then they come to work so there are all these but of course what do they do they are creating they are creating and they are becoming more and more authors and they act upon uh, uh, responsibility, sustainability, relevance, inclusion, uh, consequences of what you do. Uh, so all these issues that perhaps they have discussed in the previous scenes. So probably this is the most engaging, challenging, creative process where, as I hope you understand, I, I make myself understood, it is not just one person that has, you know, the idea and the creation. It's really like a constant negotiation and co-creation. Muchas gracias, Paolo. Uh, well, we have, uh, unfortunately, we have run out of time, but uh, I want to thank both of you, uh, Paolo and Michele, for your uh, inspir inspirational uh, talk, because uh, actually we are really, really interested in these scopes and uh, the, the thinking of La creación de ese espacio intermedio, uh, which uh, it, as a symbol helps us to connect with all the uh, practices in life uh, and question what is our part, but not as an artist, as a single artist or as a single architect or as a single designer, but uh, 
uh, as a collective uh, work, uh, not only for us as a humanity, but as, as the world itself, uh, as the nature itself. So, well, thank you very much. And uh, I uh, uh, will send you uh, later these days um, uh, a, a thankful uh, recognizement for your participation. I will allow myself to show it here to Michele and uh, to Paolo on behalf of uh, Dr. Lilia Vélez Iglesias, the general director, uh, academic general director of Ibero Puebla, as uh, also from uh, Javier Recevedo, director, uh, director of the Department of uh, Art Design and Architecture. So thank you very much. And well, uh, we are, uh, vamos a continuar con la programación. Ya, I, I, I'm stumbling now between languages. <laughs> Uh, ahora continuamos la siguiente eh, charla, eh, bueno, el siguiente taller que tendrá parte a, eh, a mediodía para quienes eh, se inscribieron a ese uh, taller que, eh, estoy buscando la imagen, perdón, uh, la siguiente eh, charla que es a cargo, el taller a cargo de Marcela Machuca, quienes se han eh, inscrito ahí, bueno, uh, seguramente han recibido el link y eh, quienes nos inscriben a, a taller, eh, nuestra siguiente charla eh, a partir del de mediodía con Cintia Flores del taller eh, de Hábitat Tian con la charla Emprendimiento Socioambiental vinculado al hábitat que bueno pues claro como pueden ver también eh, ahora empezamos a ver eh, muchas conexiones entre las diferentes charlas Um, también, eh, bueno, Miquele eh, amablemente nos ha compartido su correo electrónico en la caja de mensajes y bueno, pues por supuesto que cualquier otro interés que tengan en eh, la Fundación Pistoleto, en la Academia UNID, pues a través de eh, nosotros en el departamento, pues también podemos vincularle. Thank you, thank you, Paolo, thank you, Miquele, chao. Eh, congratulaciones por... Eh... El nombre también, entorno, eh, me gusta muchísimo. Yo creo que es una gran idea. Yo, cuando hablamos, yo soy en torno de ti, tú eres en torno de mí. Es una... Claro. Me una co-creación. Exacto. Muchas gracias. Gracias, felicidades. Gracias a vos.